But this is what happens when a militarily dominant race claims that its God and worldview are superior and global and universal. Not a claim to that the and most eco-place-based indigenous tribal cultures would make. And I think that's wrong. But the problem is the current global political situation, your own geopolitics. We have two monotheistic, incredibly Jealous gods going at each other's throat. How'd that happen? I think they lost their tribal roots and became this, this universalizing, proselytizing. You, know, you don't see many, well, I'll call them missionaries out there. You know, <laughs> Jewish missionaries in Africa. <laughs> I mean, the ethnic origin, the place origin of this. Quote unquote religion is acknowledged by indigenous people. It's when a religion transforms itself into this universalization that I think is the problem with the current geopolitical situation. I heard that question in the morning. Uh, well, I'm here to speak for and redeem my grandma and she and say thanks, but no thanks. We don't want your white man's religion, your psychological holocaust. I figure I four Churchill's out Luke now and he needs replacement. Uh, okay, one exception. My, my mom's a Episcopalian and she's still alive and I haven't hardly have the heart to try to change that right now. But to adopt the tone of the famous Native American book title, let me tell you now, Holy Rose Remission was not mission for culture slaughter, of social genocide. By the mid 1960s, when I was there, sure, there were no doubt a good number of uh, parents who had already been successfully proselytized, who did think that raising their kids as Catholic was a lot of, or at least a necessary thing in terms of cultural survival, I suppose. But that didn't make it right. What their kids suffered was a monomaniacal erasure of anything indigenous, an onslaught upon the Lakota way of life and language. And again, it was a brainwashing of Western theology, which says there's only one very human like, anthropomorphic God. That therefore the eagle, Omri, the bison, that conga, and the metal arm, that Shibnupa, have no part in the deity. And from my own eco point of view, uh, frankly, that's complete, completely anathema. To reinforce these beliefs, we, we attended Mass seven days a week. As a member of the choir, I learned to sing an ecclesiastical chant in the Dorian mode, a still medieval sounding minor key that haunts me to this day. Lord, yeah, the brother always went like this. It just occurred to me now, I'm saying, Lord have mercy. Mercy. There was no mercy. <laughs> the irony of the words that I've seen going struck me later is I pondered a church complicit in the butchering of wounded knee at all. Then there was dormitory life. Every few nights, the attending Jesuit brother would play a recording of the Pyrgian Suite, highlighted by the song In the Hall of the Mountain King. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that melody was meant to replicate the terrors of hell and to keep all the Indian boys awake and fearfully conscious of their sins and thankfully conscious of the rewards of Christian salvation. The music is a uh, This too frankly epitomizes the scare tactics of bogus alien metaphysics. But there was no room for protest. A big old Anglo Saxon swore word in my part like a sister Bonaventure feeding me a part of soap. I think it was life away. More than my main point, the same fate awaited any boy who ventured to speak in the cold time. Therefore. Well, my younger brother was an even worse in history than I was. I spawned from some lower level of Don David Inferno, apparently. And so I saw him beaten internally by the, by the brothers by a paddle several inches thick. On one occasion, they struck his buttocks so hard that his head was propelled into the concrete wall several feet away. It's only made him here. So he ran away once, my brother and me, not from any consciousness of fleeing the tyranny of the coitus ideology. No. We were just tired of being physically and psychologically abused. We were too young and stupid to realize that home, perhaps the city, was almost 100 miles away. 
And when we got up two or three miles, I figured in the semi-desert, cactus ridden trees, and south of Black Hills and on top. Before we gave up and lay on the side of the highway, the Jesuit band had come by and picked us up and take us back. Another nice paddle beating, as you can well imagine. I'm not saying that this year at Holy Rosary Mission was, was merit unmitigated towards her. I mean, we ate good. We had cornmeal mush for breakfast every day. And cornflakes on Sunday. God, before that. I had to go to church anyway every day, so cornflakes. Then we knew it was Sunday, I guess. <laughs> it was better than I could have gotten home, probably. I mean, it was damned. My love, my cheese, I still miss that. <laughs> And the sister did foster my intellectual bent to the point that I may have been one of the few third graders in history who have memorized all the U.S. presidents, all 50 state capitals, and I'm still thankful for this, all 50 state birds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The last point, finally, okay, head towards your pod and quote it, Tom. But at last, when I finally got that lock to open the ears in, I was still looking into a dung infested metaphor about what you'd say to me. I can't believe I wrote that sentence. <laughs> and here I'm, just, I'm here to assert the blackout that there are many bullets in the mission yet. I was going to show you a, a PowerPoint slideshow of my summer vacation, but I see I don't have to fill up any time. But I do want to point to, to a few of them. Just <clears throat> The first one was uh, this, this picture of the Lewis and Clark statue outside this art museum in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, it's the Great Plains Art Center. And right outside, I was on, this, I was on the Board of Governors, I think, for three years. It's probably been kicking me out because I slammed that statue on the, on the internet all the time. It's Lewis and Clark, and going like this, I got the guys that, uh, you know, they're going to explore and discover. Pioneer. UNL's model is still pioneering new frontiers. <laughs> Don't think that doesn't hurt a little bit. <laughs> well, above them is this brave, noble savage with a good rubber nose with his arms outstretched. And my caption is, take the land, it's yours, it's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> I've also had a few flags from the, the, the Custer battle, the Black Star, the little big one battle. <laughs> and they still have one of the earliest uh, plaques. They put up there, this research is from the 1880s, and it has the official blah blah blah, these men were killed in the service of their country, trying to clear Montana territory of hostile Indians. Hostile Indians. I was thinking of that crocodile guy. He's going out there, hoping people, hoping to make a stick. And when you come with a stick, might they be aggressive? <laughs> It's still a little moments of ongoing racism. 